<laughs> oh, this, is, this road is so sketchy. It's awesome. <laughs> oh. oh man, I hope the weather forecast wasn't wrong again. This is National Forest Road 5400. Oh, not for the faint of heart, I guess you'd say. And maybe not even for vehicles that aren't high clearance. It's making me appreciate my Subaru Forester. All right, if you're afraid of heights or sketchy roads, you might want to cover your eyes for a second. <laughs> This place is blowing my mind. So beautiful. And look at this. Where I'm trying to get up there is where the sun's, you start to see it over here in this mountain a little bit. One thing I will say, the altitude, definitely not something I'm used to. I have a little trouble catching my breath. Who could ask for a better spot to have to stop? Catch your breath. I mean, seriously, this is ridiculous. Now, unless you're new to this channel, you probably know I live in the Pacific Northwest, about 15 miles north of Seattle specifically. Now, what you may not know though, is that I'm originally from the East Coast, spent most of my life there until almost five years ago. And ever since my wife and I decided we were gonna move out here, there's been one thing I've been really wanting to see in person the entire time. And that's these trees right here. Let me show you. So these trees are called larches, and they're actually two different species of tree, the subalpine larch and the western larch. But they're very rare, you can only find them growing out in this area. In other spots like it, um, like in British Columbia, some spots in Idaho, stuff like that. The thing that makes them so unique is obviously, I mean, they're conifer trees, just like this tree here. But obviously they change color and lose their needles in the fall, just like a regular deciduous tree would. Locals here call it larch madness. That process makes them turn this blazing golden yellow orange color that when it, I don't know if you can see all the way up there on top, but when they catch in the sunlight, it's like they're on fire. But there's a couple things that make these trees really challenging to get to. One of them is they're so far out of the way. Like for instance, I drove four hours to get to the, <clears throat> this trailhead and then Hiking on the trailhead will be another four or five hours. The other thing, as I alluded to, is they only change this bright golden color for a very small bit of time, like two to three weeks maximum. And on top of that, to make matters worse, the areas where you would normally go to find these trees, it often snows as early as September, and then the, the passes shut down, the roads are closed. So, long story short, I've been here almost five years, and this is the first time I'm getting to see one of these trees in person. Well, actually, second time. Technically, it was two days ago when I tried to make this video the first time, but maybe I'll save that story for another time. 
Actually, what the hell, I'll just tell you now. Don't worry, you'll get a kick out of this. You're gonna laugh at me. I made a total rookie mistake. It was as if I never, ever researched a location to go shoot for photography before. Like, it was my very first time. So anyway, I decided I'm gonna go to Cutthroat Lake. I drive the three and a half hours out there. Hike another, I don't know, two, two, two and a half hours, two hours, 45 minutes maybe, up the trail. This altitude's kicking my ass. And anyway, beautiful hike, beautiful lake. And there were definitely larches there. The problem I had is I was going for sunset. I wanted some of that nice golden light reflecting off these golden trees. So I get all the way out there <laughs> and realize that the spot, spot I picked, the like curving area that the lake sat in at the base of this peak, was facing the east. Uh, at least the hike was worth it. So long story short, about two hours before like actual sunset, because the sun dips behind the mountains a lot earlier. So about hour, 45 minutes, two hours before actual sunset, the whole area is just in shadow. Mistakes we make sometimes, huh? Anyway, I'm at this spot. because as you can see with this, that sun glowing off those peaks, this time, I didn't half-ass my homework. And I know for sure I can get some sunset light, sunset light on some larches. So that's what I'm here to do. And I'm trying to bring you along with me since very, 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 very few people ever get to see these. So I figured you enjoy. We'll do a little bit more hiking. Try to put this camera down for a minute. And then we'll uh, see what it looks like when I get up there. I feel like something's about to happen here. I'm going around a bent. Oh my. Oh, I thought that last part of the trail was good. This is. I don't know what to say. This views for days. Man, part of me has half a mind to just stop here for photos. I mean, obviously I want larches, but this is epic too. And one thing I'm a little worried about, I was gonna hike up to the pass and then of course hike back in the sunset. But on the way up, this whole entire side of the mountain's in shade. And so, and there was major ice. I'm worried about hiking back down in the dark. I don't have uh, any snow footwear here or ice. What do they call them? Crampons? Oh, I'm gonna push on a little bit more. See if I at least find uh, some more larches. And then I might put down some roots there and photograph for a little while. All right, hopefully you can see there's a few spots on some mountain sides where there's little bits of larches there, over there. What I'm looking at now at the moment though, there's a whole grove of them down on this hillside. I'm not sure I can get a good vantage point. And then there's a couple up here in this peak. I'm not sure if I can get there. Obviously I've never been here, just exploring around, but that's what I have my eye on at the moment. See, there's a bunch coming down in there too. But it's looking like I'm probably, probably going to have to break up my long lens. A little spoiled walking up. The, like Literally, I was walking through larches. I don't know, that might be about as close as I'm going to get to them. But, uh, oh wait, maybe not. It's off in the distance there, I see I'll try to very faint outline of a trail, so it might actually go right past there. Hmm. Try it out. I thought I was here for the larches, but I just can't stop stopping. <laughs> I mean, would you? Look at this. It's, uh, and listen how perfectly quiet it is. Like, this is just out of control. 
Stuff like this though is why I moved to Washington State. <laughs> oh, definitely coming back in this hike. I think this is my favorite hike so far out of all the ones I've done. Now granted, I haven't done thousands of hikes, but this is just incredible. Definitely bringing the wife back up here. First chance I get. And I think even better views are coming. I mean, look at this. I think I might get a peek at those mountains on the other side. All right, moving on. <laughs> guys look He's a, I'm taller taller than the tree but uh yeah I think I'm gonna set up shop here for a little bit and uh dig out the dig out my photo camera here <laughs> Nothing else, I hope this inspires you guys to come out and visit this spot. As much as I want to, I'm not going to wait for full-blown sunset tonight. Um, I'm actually getting some really good side light from the angle I'm at now, so I'm happy with that. And Next time I try this, hopefully there, there won't be ice on the trail on the way back. So yeah, I'm gonna pack up my gear here, head on back down the mountain. Let me know what you thought. Let me know what else you wanna see on this channel. And while you're at it, don't forget to head on down and hit that like button. That would uh, be much appreciated. Does this channel a big favor and also a big favor to those who might want to watch this content. So anyway, say goodbye to the North Cascades for now. <laughs> Catch you on the flip side later on.